In this video, I'll address one of the main reasons why most people still greatly underestimate how much can actually be done with large language models or LLMs. And this has to do with how we think about complex tasks and workflows and how instead of thinking about them as one big task, we should be focusing on how we can break them down into smaller subtasks. So to make this a bit more concrete, I'm going to walk you through this with a few examples, starting with this task of generating a sales report. So this first pattern describes how we might approach this with some tool like ChatGPT, where we give the AI these instructions for doing the task. And so a good prompt would look something like this, with guidelines to follow, the structure we want for the report, and ideally also some examples of how these sections should look like, so we can control the writing style better and just give more direction to the results in general. And so then we give these instructions to the model alongside our sales data and any other relevant documents and then what we get out is garbage now you probably have this kind of an experience with something like ChatGPT, where the text just sounds generic you can tell immediately it was written by an ai there will be hallucinations and factual errors so it's not going to refer the data correctly it might make up some numbers or some facts which is obviously a big no-no for this kind of a task and it's probably going to ignore some of the guidelines and some of the examples that we give here in our prompt. And so this isn't because LLMs fundamentally can't generate this kind of content, but it's simply because the task in this case is too big. There's too much data, too many instructions, too many different things the LLM needs to generate at once. And when that's the case, you simply tend to see a lot more issues like hallucinations and generic language. And because most people's experience with LLMs is still limited to just ChatGPT and similar tools, that's when they conclude that LLMs just can't help with these kinds of tasks. But to show you a counter example of the same task, except here we are breaking down the big task and treating each section of the report as a separate subtask. Generating the executive summary is one task, the section about our KPIs is another task, and then we have our category and regional sales. And let's say that our business offers some services as well as some physical products, in which case we might want to analyze our service sales slightly differently than our product sales, uh, so we can break down this subtask even further. And then what this allows us to do is that we can write specific prompts for each individual task. And that means that for the executive summary, instead of having these four lines dedicated to describing how it should look like, we can instead dedicate an entire prompt like this just for the executive summary with specific guidelines and very specific examples. And the same goes for our KPI section and all these other sections as well. And then what the LLM interaction will look like is that we'll simply run all of these prompts individually and we can do this in parallel to avoid adding too much latency in our system. And then we get a bunch of individual outputs for every section, which we can then easily combine in our application, whether just combining them into a markdown file or inserting them into some Word document templates. And this way we get out our final complete sales report. But with this approach, every individual section will be of much higher quality with far less, if any, hallucinations. And you can also have a lot more control for the style and tone of the report so that it sounds much more natural and human-like instead of immediately sounding like it was written by an AI. And I'll show you a different example now. And this one is about processing long, complex RFPs. So requests for proposals. And let's take a manufacturing company that sells very complex technical products. For this example, let's say they sell equipment for solar power, so panels, power inverters, batteries, etc. And for these kinds of manufacturing companies, the RFPs they receive tend to be pretty long because if somebody wants to build a solar power plant, they are going to need hundreds of solar panels and a bunch of additional equipment, all with very specific technical requirements. So handling these and figuring out what products we should offer offer to the customer takes a lot of time. Uh, so now let's see how we can use AI to automate this. And so here, before even thinking about passing these long documents into a language model, we're going to start off with some pre-processing because one thing about these kinds of RFPs is that most of the hundreds of pages tend to be just boilerplate, general terms and conditions rather than the actual technical and product requirements. So we want to narrow that down first and get rid of any pages that are not relevant for our task. So the first step here to do that is a document classifier. 
just using traditional machine learning to classify which pages are boilerplate and which pages contain actual technical details. So this way we can narrow down from hundreds of pages to maybe just some dozens, which is already very helpful because as I mentioned before, the less material and the more specific material we give the language model and the better quality outputs we tend to get. But we won't stop there and we are also going to split these pages further down into smaller chunks, sections, and tables. And then we're gonna start using a language model to route these sections based on product category. So we'll separate these sections and tables into those that are about solar panels, those that are about power inverters, which is another key component in solar power, and then let's say mounts and other hardware. And the reason we do this is that obviously the requirements for all these things are going to be very different. Panels will have power outputs and temperature ranges. Inverters will have power capacity. Mounts will have angles and load capacity. So it makes sense that in order to extract these requirements with a language model, we are probably going to want to have different prompts for all these different types of products. And so that's exactly what we'll do next, is that we'll run all these sections through a language model again, using the appropriate extraction prompt to gather all the requirements in the RFP and combine them into a full list of products and specifications that the customer needs in some kind of structured or semi-structured format. And then from there, we could also do things like matching these requirements against our own product catalog, figuring out which products we could offer to the customer, drafting a proposal, etc. Uh, but for the scope of this video, I'll just leave it here. So just to wrap it up, if you're struggling to get good results from an LLM for a task, uh, just try and see how you could break the task down into smaller subtasks. And if you still struggle with the performance in the subtasks in a way that prompting doesn't fix, try and break it down some more. And also don't get fixated on trying to do all the things, all the tasks in the workflow with LLMs. It's actually a good idea to try and see where you could handle some parts of the logic with either classical machine learning methods, like we did here in this example with the document classifier, or even entirely deterministic code uh, for the sales report. We could imagine pre-calculating some KPIs from our data before passing it to the language model. Anything you can do to try and reduce the complexity of the task that's left for the language model to do, then the better and more reliable your results are going to be. If you'd also like to find out what kinds of tasks and processes could be automated in your company, you can book a short discovery call through the link in the description, and I'll be happy to help you out. Hope you found this video useful, and I'll see you on the next one.